In this video, I'm going to be sewing a table runner. When sewing a table runner, I never take measurements at the start. I actually just do it as I go. And I'm going to show you how to do that. It's super quick and super easy. So let's get started with sewing a table runner. I have three major parts of my table runner and they are already done, they're already appliqued and they are going to be squared off to 12 inches by 12 inches. So I've placed my 12 inch squares onto my dining room table and I've decided that these in-between bits here are going to be 8 inches. And each of the ends, I'm going to make it eight inches as well. I don't like the table runner to overlap the table. I like it to be actually on and finish on the table. So we now know that we have to cut strips 12 inches by eight inches. So I'm going to need two in between my table runner and two at each end. Here are my four sections for my table runner and before I start sewing the table runner I am going to press these sections so they're nice and flat and crisp. So just so you guys know that any of the products that I use I actually have a Amazon store. I will link that in the description box down below and within that store are any of the products that I use on a regular basis on my videos and I buy all the time. Full disclosure, anything that you do buy, I may get a small commission from anything that you purchase from them links at no charge to you. So this right here is the Babylock Soprano and I'm going to get her all set up to sew this table runner. As you can see, I've put in some matching yellow cotton in the top thread and I actually just have just white bobbin thread in that bobbin home. I was trying to think of the word for it. I always sew with a 9014 Microtex needle and we're just going to keep all the settings just like this. I mean, you could go down a little bit if you wanted to a 2.0. That is the stitch length. And I always like to sew with my quarter of an inch foot with guide. This gives me a quarter of an inch every time I sew with it. And you can buy these at any vegetable sewing retailer. So I'm going to start with the very, very bottom of our table runner. So basically I'm going to get one of our sections and I'm just going to put it right sides together. And what right sides together means is that you're going to get the designed parts of your fabric and you're going to put them right sides together because once we sold them down, we're going to be opening them out and they're going to be sewed together like so. So what we're going to do right now is sew all the way down. You will then open it out and you have two seams all joined together. So you're going to take that to your iron, you're going to press that down, always good practice. And the next one we're going to do is we're going to sew at the top here. We're going to join that other yellow piece here. I've got my next section all joined up like so. As you can see, I don't really use pins or clips. I mean, I mean, really, it's such a short distance. Why bother? Like, just take it to your sewing machine and start sewing. But we are going to get sewing and sew this part of the table runner down. So I know that about 80% of you right now aren't subscribed. And I want to let you know that I create videos every single week, either on sewing or quilting. So don't forget to hit that subscribe to watch more videos. And I have nearly 300 videos on my YouTube channel, so there is definitely something out there on my channel for you right now after watching this. I'm going to continue on and sew the next few pieces. You don't need me to show you how to join these together. This is so easy, you guys. So I will join you in the next part. So this is basically what it looks like so far. And I just want you to see how much different it looks when you start to add a trim. So this is one end of my table runner. And I am going to place this trim right on this seam. So I'm going to cover this seam up with this trim, which looks absolutely amazing. It just pops. So don't be scared of trim. I'm literally just going to sew this on. That's all you have to do. And also for the other part here on these in-between parts, I am going to add some of this sequin just to give it a oomph. What I'm going to do next is just have a nice thin piece of the yellow gingham again going all the way down here. I'm going to do it like two inches wide to the length of our table runner here. 
I need to join two sections together because it's not quite long enough and the quick way of joining two pieces together is going across diagonally like this so I will show, sew this it just creates a nicer finish so when you fold over it looks like this it's exactly the way that you would create if you were doing a binding and then you just like cut this section off so we don't have the bulk there Okay, so I'm sewing this kind of border thing on the other side of my table topper. And the reason I've got these clips on is because this trim is a little bit unruly, so it's helping to keep it together. So I'm going to sew all the way down this table runner. All you have to do now is cut a piece of quilter's batting that they would use for quilting for the length and width of the table runner and also a backing. So I'm struggling to find a piece of batting in my sewing room. So just to let you know that you can join two pieces of batting together and I will link that video in the description box below. We're going to get our, the top of our table runner and it's going to be face up. You're going to get the back in and that is going to be face down. And then you're going to get your back in, your batten, should I say, and you're going to place that on top of the two. And we're basically going to do a really simple closing. We're just going to go all the way along and all the way down the table runner. And we're going to leave a little gap where we're going to pull it right sides through. So this is going to be kind of unruly so I would recommend gripping somewhere or pinning somewhere and take this over to the sewing machine and start sewing. If you have some excess around the sides like I do just cut them away. I chose to leave, oh I've not even done it yet, but I've chose to leave my opening at the top. So I'm just going to stitch this into place and just leave this little bit of an opening and we can open it right sides through. Go ahead and press the table runner down, especially where you've got this opening and we are going to top stitch all the way around. And also I recommend just going over these sections again where we've got this crease. That will just hold everybody into place because I'm not going to free motion quilt this. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and leave a comment. If you don't know what comment to leave, let me know what sewing machine you are currently using. Thanks for watching. Bye guys.